Hello, welcome back to Ark Knights. Um, the event ended, of course, so I can't play it anymore. <laughs> so, next thing that we are going to be doing is breaking the ice. I, I like the Keurig people. Everyone that I met during that whole mission part was so much fun. So I'm excited to play more Keurig missions. <laughs> um, so. Without further ado, let's get into it. Um, the first few levels are going to be really easy. So, the first few episodes of this part of the series will probably be pretty quick when it comes to the fighting part. Um, the reading part, I might still be a little dumb and not read too well, so we'll find out. This time I brought a drink, so I'm prepared. Understood! While fighting in the bitter cold, all combatants will be affected to some extent, even the warriors of Kyrig. Units on icy surface will periodically be chilled, inflicting with the cold status and reducing their attack speed. I already know about that, trust me. Let's try to strike our enemies now before snowfall begins. She won't sleep on the job. Why can't everyone try ah, there to get it is. along? During snowfall, all enemies and allies will periodically be afflicted with the cold status. Looks like someone over there got frozen into solid ice. A unit affected by cold will instead be frozen if chilled again. Ah, yes. I'm already used to this. I see. Where's the little cat? Well, little lava. Come help over here. Don't call me that. <laughs> Looks like these ice cubes need a good roasting. Oh, I should have put lava there then. Looks like a longer snowstorm is coming. We better be ready to evacuate. Before that though, let's brush up on the physics <laughs> physics knowledge that will surely come in handy for future operations. I invited Shaw for a special demonstration. Structure Dome didn't you want me to grab it to the pit? Right, even if the crab is pretty light, I'm not sure if I can cover that distance. Okay. Don't worry, just wait for the metal crab to become frozen before pushing it. If frozen enemies are affected by a shift effect, while on an icy surface, the strength of the displacement is greatly increased. If the terrain allows for it, make sure, make use of this knowledge to eliminate the difficult enemies. Here, out of the way, out of the way. Wow, yeah. That's Here great I am. Even the dead can't save you. So standing on the ice makes you cold, and then the snowstorm freezes you if you're right. cold. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. That's uh, way easier than what it was during the current one, where you just freeze constantly. Oh, time to read. External force. A minute touch of force from outside with just the lightest push. An avalanche will bury the whole of Kyrg. Conspiracies, machinations, and all. That is really cool. Whoa. Business tripping manager. Sir, this is what a shoddy plank of wood will make itself for 50 whole pounds. Now, sir, you'll need to learn something new today. There's no ordinary piece of wood. It's a blessing of Karagander, goddess of the snow realm. It's all thanks to her protection that Kyrig <clears throat> could be free from the catastrophes and settled down or set down roots here. And the stuff that made this charm comes from the evergreen trees of Mount Jungfrau. Jungfrau, our own second highest peak in all of Kyrig. Do you know how much? Do you know much about Jungfrau? Legend says it's a mountain formed in the tears of Kyrgander is all as well as they fell and froze. Jesus Christ. It's already it's already a great start. <laughs> the trees watered in that snow from on high ground, full with Kyrgander's love and the favor for this land, and charms made the from that timber assure your safety and warding of calamity wherever you may go. Seeing as it's your first time here in Kyrg. Why not take uh, some souvenirs for your home folk back in Victoria? What gives you that idea? Listen, 
These last two years, Mr. Enciodes has made, had more and more of these big corporate woozits <laughs> flocking in. I heard your accent and I knew straight away. To new people like you, I recommend these charms in particular to mark the occasion. Heard of the Shigata before? Heard of Shigata, maybe? They're people eating beasts deep in our mountains. Sinister to the eye, inhuman. They're there and gone again <laughs> when you least expect it. But so long as you're wearing this charm, blessed by the Vine Bear Court, you'll cower those things under Kiaragonder's might, and they won't harm you. The Shigata were evil originally? Okay. I assume that's how you say it. I don't know. And I'm not looking it up right now. And just think. You take it back to your family and tell them. I just realized I'm using a bear's cup. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the bears. It's just a cup. This charm bears... This charm bears the divine protection of Kiari's Mount Carlin. Paints the complete picture, doesn't it? You've tripped halfway across the land of Kierig. You wouldn't go back to your own without something nice for it, would you? Bah, fine, I'll take one. And one for my wife and a little tot each. That's the ticket! If only we could all be as straightforward as you. Let me see. Sorry, this wood must have been stripped from any random mountain tree. Huh? Ah, cliff art! <laughs> what gives you the right to say that? First, without approval from the Palaroches, no one's even allowed to climb Young Farrow. Second, I sure didn't hear about anyone climbing her while I was gone. When I left Kerrig, I even told Weiss, if anyone makes it up her, be sure to send me a message. How do you know who? Wait a minute. That's hell. You can't be Miss Ensha. Ensha, you're, you're Mr. Enchio's da sister? Daughter. <laughs> uh huh. Now, hold it, sir. Were you actually trying to swindle me? Hell, oh, <laughs> They said Miss Ensha loved, tr loved climbing ever since she was little. Seems she knows more about the snow caps than us commoners, after all. All these wares of mine came from the hunters in the mountains, actually. They must have been the ones swindling me, no doubt. I'll be going to find them and settle our score. As for this charm, Misensha, would you mind? It's true it has the Vine Bear Court's blessing. No man of Kerrig would dare to forge that seal and offend a Karagander. If you want to ward off any rumored Shigatas around with it, forget it. <laughs> but if you take it back as a souvenir, I think it'll work great. So just slash that price a little. Ugh. In light of that, I'll put them at 10 pounds apiece. Now, sir, are you still buying? If the sister of Mr. Encio says as much, I've got no reason to be skeptical. Skeptical? St skeptical? Business for you must be tough. I'll take five of them. Coming right up. Are you here to buy anything else? Anything, Miss Encha? Whatever you fancy, it's yours. My business owes itself to the Silver Ashes, after all. No, no, I'll pay like normal. Right, Doctor? Oh, wait, I'm here. I didn't even think about that. Uh, lucky you repaired enough Victorian and Casimir's cash. You couldn't just take stuff? It's your clan's territory. No, what the fuck? Uh, lucky we prepared enough money. Jeez, we could exchange all we want, but it's still only worth anything. It's still only worth anything in our family's region. What? And this trade port's doing the hottest business anywhere in the, our land. You may as well spend all that money right here. You'll still get away with it. Lady Incha, we should be on our way to the station by now. Oh, we're tight on time, Doctor. Let's go. I didn't even think the Doctor would be here. Because on the the rides to Lake Silbernahers, the Doctor wasn't there until the end. The blizzard is coming. Take caution, Outsider. And you are? If you don't want to freeze, leaving now will save your skin. What are you blanking for, Doctor? Someone was talking to me. Huh? There's no one here, though. It's far from the right season for leisurely outdoor coffee. Was that Karagonder? Look behind you, you only see a bright canopy blocking the sun and a sign advertising Carlin trade. Was that Karagonder that was warning me? A deserted terrace sits silent, just like the distant peaks of pure white. Maybe it was the pages of the magazine on the table rustling in the wind that gave you the illusion someone was sitting next to you, talking to you. 
Uh, or Caragonder. Doctor, snap out of it. Let's move. Crazy. Was it Caragonder saying it? Or was it just... We'll meet again. Yeah, what? It was Kiar. Crazy. Matterhorn, you're here. The Master's waiting for you. Good to see you, Wise. Aren't you going? I was going to, but the Master wants to invite the Doctor to the Triclane Council with him and have me stay back to greet them in your place. After all, I'm an employee of Rhodes Island myself. I think you must be ready for a vacation after regarding the young lady for so long. Besides, given, out, given you're out here, I'm guessing she ditched you? <laughs> yes, she's shopping with the Doctor right now. She wanted a vacation from me too, so she had me let she had me let her free. Uh, that's the master and the young lady for you. Well, how do you feel being back this time? The territory has been fast with construction and huge in its overall change. It's almost unrecognizable already. That's the master for you, indeed. I'll take the two of them up on their kind great kindness and visit home for now. See my parents, and then I'll be on my standby at the Masters. How about you? Me? You've been away for a while, too. Last time we met, weren't you off with the Master to Columbia? It's so weird that it's Columbia. <laughs> I've got nothing pressing. Savoring the streets, again, is more than enough for me. What about that old Itra friend of yours? Monch, I think, was the name. Eat a bite with him if you have the time. That's... We'll see, I guess. It's not a him. What was it? Was much a girl or a boy? I don't even remember now. It's me. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Brilliant. It looks like the base station's signal is fine. Hmm. How are you? I've found a, su a few suitable hidden spots for the comm station installation, but no matter where we install a station in Tur Turicum, we won't be able to catch all of Kiarig. This is Carrick's Southern Gateway, and practically its only contact channel with the outside. Setting up a comms network here with the mass it has massive importance, but if you want to cover the whole of Carrick, setting up a few more simple stations around the Central Lake region would be the best option, which they ended up doing. That's crazy. That's not what I'm asking. Didn't you have me wandering outside so I could scope things out for us? What I mean is... You haven't been back to Kerrig for a long time. How do you feel? Oh. Honestly, it feels totally unbelievable. When I left Kerrig under the Silver Ashes Talent Fostering Program, it was from here too. Back then, even Turricum was just an ordinary little village, let alone the rail station at the border now. I never thought it'd be so become so big. At this point, I think you could argue it stands up to the cities on the outside. Doing construction work like this in the snowy mountains must be harder than I could ever imagine. Good. Where are, where are you? Where are you all right now, Captain? I'll find... Oh, I'll come find you. Okay. Where are all of you right now? Okay. <laughs> the words flip in my brain short circuits. My hair is weird today. <laughs> We're boarding a train to Carlin. You don't need... Actually, my, hair, my headphones are pulling my hair. One second. It's normally brushed, but it's not... I haven't brushed it in a little while, so it's like... Just fluffy. I don't know what to do with it. You don't need to come with yet. Huh? You mentioned your home was an industrial area in the mountains. Yep. For now, go back and visit. Nothing's more important than the family. But you're back in the mountains. It's the perfect opportunity to head home. The doctor thinks so, too. Did the doctor say that? I understand. If you're okay with it, then I will. So the doctor... The doctor has me with... Has me with. The train for the foot... The train for the foot of Mount Carlin is about to depart. The train will depart soon. Please board now. I'm heading out. Have a good break, Aurora. That's sweet.
With a steam whistle and a faint announcement, the train departing for Carlin sets slowly into motion. Doctor, let me tell you about the names of all these peaks. <laughs> Look, the one over there, the flattest slope is Junkfrau. The third Saintus named that one. The really steep one there, that's Matterhorn. His name actually came straight from that one. Oh. She's so happy. And she continues on and continues... Continues on with something to say about all the scenery that passes by and all that Kira gives. Beside Carrier wears a, his eternal smile, listening to every word quietly and respectfully. But from time to time, the faraway look in his eyes carries a hint of something unclear. Why is the doctor always in, like, a motorcycle helmet? <laughs> Sharp, Sharp reclines against the seat, browsing neck pages. He'll find that the contents of Kiarig's internet far exceed his expectations. Oh, the doctor. Alternatively, you listen to Ensha and cast your gaze out the window. Outside, remnants of ice drift in a lake reflecting the blue sky. Some locals are together at the shallows, some drawing water, some doing their laundry, some laughing. The purest white snow peaks stand imposingly tall. Any attempt to lift your head and see their end blocked by the sunlight. Halfway up, where the mountains level somewhat, a young shepherd herds flocks of stock beasts home. No surprise crosses him as he sees the people aboard the train. Instead, he lifts his whip, waving at you greetingly. Not far away is the village where he lives, smoke spiraling from chimneys and peaceful prosperous. Oh! The sight of it all wipes the care from your mind. This is so cute. It's, it is funny because she's like so excited and then he's just like, mm. and he's just on his phone. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't care. He's just on his phone like, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, perhaps this journey will do just fine. This is so cute. I like this already. Oh, fight. Time to beat a bitch. Live up to duty. Holy fuck. Okay. Um. Claw beast. A new challenge. Okay, he's on ice, and then that's snow. Okay. I mean, let's be honest. There's no way I lose. I. I'm a little over level Let me for this right a diversion. now. diversion. Boom. <laughs> okay, let's just speed it up, see what happens. I mean, I could take a Degenbrecker. Any instructions? Ah, sight. Let's just Degenbrecker. How soon do you want them gone? Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> She's so strong. That's crazy. Injections okay. ready. Prepare for battle. Uh, let's go there. I mean, she's just... Oh, Bridget. Custom drone made to order Carlin Trade gain status resistance. I'll show them what I can do. Oh, shit. I didn't even see that. Please hold on. Ah. That's funny. I didn't even see that there was a thing here. Your shadow. Wait, no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted her. Got it. I mean, honest. There's still no way I lose to this, though. Uh, let's place her there. Oh. Place her there. Orchid, ready to move. Mirage! Mission accomplished. And that was easy as fuck. Um, <laughs> I'm a little over leveled for this, so. Oh, it's these two! What's taking too long? Keep it down, Sirius. You're interrupting my train of thought. What's to think about? NCO to, to hand his land over this time. Yucatan, your opinion? I agree with Russ, but Sir Encio's wouldn't won't just lie down and take it. 
At least you think you could before you talk, unlike your wife here. Oh, who exactly is this about? You, of course, my beautiful little sister. If only it wasn't for Arctos and his idiot face firing off at anything to do with Carlin. I didn't want to fall out with NCO so this soon. That's for sure. People like NCOs are a handful. Even with if he croaks, he'll be sure to put us on the brink too, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Not to mention, something's telling me, something tells me he won't accept his sorry lot, and it's telling me loud. <laughs> In my view, I said keep it down, serious. If all you really have something to say, you can go outside and then tell the mountains about it. Of course, I won't let you back indoors. <laughs> Fine, I'll just shut up then. I'm so happy, I'm so happy to talk to yourself. Sir Arctos arrives. Ah, here's the absent father. The absent father himself, at the summit of Carlin in winter. The frigid air, the frigid winds never rest, but look in Arctos' eyes and the sound of his great axe as it drags along the ground and bursts. Come to fool people. It's as if the winds are his to bring. Look who's here, Arctos, my fine friend. And see what's, who might, who might answer that? I thought you would have bumped into each other outside and settled everything there. And that's why, and that way I wouldn't, Okay, I need something to, like, distract myself, because I'm very obviously spiraling crazy. <laughs> Where'd my stress toys go? I don't know. I have a black one that I'll just use for now. So I don't know where the green one went. Oh, there it is. I thought you would have bumped into him and settled everything out there. And that way, I wouldn't have to torment it in here, and I could go home happy. How surprising that someone can even torment you, Rotatos. Of course! I've got torment up to the nines, such as more and more people in my territory wanting to work for a living at NCOs instead. Or Gulo, the most able officer you have, not showing up today. Why? He caught a cold. Carrick's sturdiest soldier catching a cold. That's no good omen. Looks like we'll need a we'll need that man man under NCOs to give him some treatment. Notice that one? He'll get better on his own. Fine, fine. No good deed of mine goes unpunished. Seeing as you're here, it looks like we just missing NCOs now. Three o'clock chimes has not yet sounded. What the fuck? Okay. I see I've kept the two of you waiting. Sir NCOs and the Great Elder arrive. Huh? Ch There's a mystery. Why are two of them together? Oh, what the fuck? NCOs. Don't tell me you went praying to the Saintess before coming to this meeting. Far from it. I met the Great Elder along the way and had a few words with him. Great Elder, you first. A fine courtesy. Whoa. Why is the artwork always so fucking good? Like, I love this. Oh, it's Degenbrecher! The entrance to the hall slowly shuts. The air inside settling down in the instant after. The Great Elder sits straight in the middle. Arctos and Rotatos stand to one side and NCOs to the other. The gulf of difference is stark. Former Tri-Clan councils always had a sit together, talking of the year's crop of affairs, of whose house had done more and whose required assistance after blights of snow. I had not foreseen such a topic at today's council. <sighs> You'll want to really grill NCOs about that. No need to be for aggression, Arctos. As the Great Elder said, the tri -Clan Council should be no place for us to blame and reproach each other. I wonder if you've heard one about the pot in the kettle, NCOs. Enough, enough! Given we are all here, we shall commence this meeting in the tri -Clan Council. By Kyaragonder. By Kyaragonder. By Kyaragonder. I presume that I presume all three are aware of the purpose of this council. On Mr. Arctos and Ms. Rotato's proposal last meeting, that the Silver Ashes would cede governing governing authority over the valleys and mining regions for the Palroches and the Round Tails then administrate. In addition, the Silver Ashes withdrawal from the Parliament of the Tri Clan Council. 
Gnosis Edelweiss has been expelled from his post by myself. I believe both of you know this already. What good does knowing that do? Gnosis is your aid. How could his actions not have been according to your instruction? If you think pinning the blame on him will let you escape punishment, then think again! Arctaz, why come to such an arbitrary conclusion? NCOs, there's much I can tolerate from you. You can open your factories in your territory, do your business, recruit your foreigners. That is your territory. Whatever ghoulish form you twist it into, it's not my concern. But never should you have led your railroad to Carlin, bringing the copper stench unto holy earth and your mining up to Carlin's foot. Extracting resources in secret is beyond the pale. What do you take the ground of Carlin for? What do you take the land of Kiaragonder for? You even plotted against any inspection team so that they wouldn't investigate your factories. My subordinates are still bed-bound for it. Is that what you want to say? That these are all the things, all the doing of that accursed Edelweiss and not a thing to do with you? Gnosis was once my most trusted partner, and I mistakenly given him too much power. For that, I am deeply regretful. What of you, Ratatos? Is there really no leeway to reverse course between us? Oh shit, I dropped it. But It's gone! Where the fuck? How the hell did he get all the way over there? Bro, I'm dumb. I really would love to help you, NCOs. After all, six whole years ago, it was me who paved your way back into this hall. Of course, it hurts pushing you out again by my own hands. But in the end, when it's all about when it's about all of Kyrig, I just can't defend you. Though I believe the Brown Tails have benefited greatly from business in Turicum. Am I denying that? It's not that just money in our pockets. We can reap the rewards with our subjects too. Who wouldn't be a fan? Only sticks in the mud like Arctaz. But even though people talk behind my back thanks to it, crying witch about me, I still have a bottom line, NCOs. I don't know what you read or learned in those four years you studied outside that drives you to abuse your, our trust to this point. I was wrong about you six years ago, NCOs. I'll pay for that in time, but you're going to pay first. Seeding the valleys and mines under your, our d jurisdiction as well as the Silver Ashes seat at the Tri-Clan Council? These are your demands? Is it not excessively high price? Carlin Trade has already stricken its then-director in these affairs, Gnosis, off its register. The company's growth policy has recently mildened too. That much is plain to see. Too late, NCOs. If this price wasn't high, how would you ever remember it? True. If you wanted to seek forgiveness, you never would have. Oh fuck! You never would have done any of this in the first place. But since you have done it already, then today, here and now, you must pay something for it. Are you handling over handing over governance of the lands of the valleys and mines, or are you not? Are you seceding from the Tri Clan Council, or are you not? All I have done up to now is for the development of Kerrig. That it would worsen our relations with the Polarishes and Brown Tails to this ex present extent was never my wish. And from the exchanges I've just had with the two of you, I see this worsening is already uninvertible and unredeemable. I somewhat foresaw it, but to arrive at this moment in reality, at this time of, of grievance and ultimatum in this hall, still fills me with sorrow. But I truly cannot bear to see a fissure arise in the three clans that govern Kerrig today. Descent in the three clans signifies descent in Kerrig. It signifies that Kerrigander's people are soon to lose their collective homeland. And Seodes, if you truly thought so, if you truly ever thought so for even one moment, you would have sent yourself packing from Kerrig back to Victoria and been a worry less on Kerrig herself. Arctaz, I, and Seodes Silver Ash, am the head of the Silver Ashes. Silver Ass, sorry. This means I must bear my responsibility for the future of Kerrig and fulfill what it is obliged to me, of me. I don't know what makes you feel I should have stayed in Victoria. Is it because those days of only two clans in Parliament made you feel so much more powerful? Not to mention your my reforms in these years. I've let the Silver Ashes are a 
done reality. What? I've led the Silver Ashes are a done reality. The people of my territory haven't just gained from the way of life I've brought. They've continued to advance such lives by their own accord. Even if I leave, the machines will still work, and the trains on the tracks will still set into motion. Or do you truly believe that if I hand off the valleys and mines today and seize operations of those factories and railroads, that the people working there, the, the people benefiting from what I produced, will accede? That's your problem to solve, NCOs. No Rotatos. Maybe you have incredible trust in my problem-solving ability, but at the base, this is not a problem I alone must face. You wouldn't suggest that the brown tail subjects have never profited any from the these years Carlin trade has done business. How many people have the originium stoves kept going through the coldest winters procured from the Columbia by Carlin trade? There are no catastrophes on your mount, in our mountains, but the ice and snow still claim lives. What is so disgraceful about the herders prods or the fertilizer that comes from Victoria? You brought about this situation today including your constant embellishment of yourself. And now you're using the same situation to menace us? Shamelessly? Get it out. Say this is all your accomplishment. Say you're powerless to give those of Kiari self-sufficiency and that you're not afraid to have them mocking you, you head of Silver Ashes. Wrong, Rotatos. To mention, in, to mention is the bluff of one who lacks confidence, while I am only recounting the truth. You deem Carlin trade as a menace to Kyarg. That, in and itself, is a mockery beyond the heavens. Beyond the heavens. <laughs> You've got some gall by the sound of it, NCOs. I remember. You've been good at talking this sort of talk since, ever since you were young. Don't waste your breath, NCOs. Today you will. Would I not hand over today? Hit. Would I not hand it over today? General Gulo would have directly assumed control of the valleys having been stationed close to spy long ago. You, don't be so quick to resort to force, Arctaz. I can make commitments and decisions accordingly to your proposals. Conflict has been far from my intent up to now. As the head, I will not put up with any losses either. But if it's for putting your, this grievous, grievous state of affairs in check for the alliance of the three clans of the Snow Mountains, then in the capacity of Karagandr's people, the Silver Ashes can make concessions. I am fully able to offer the valleys and mines with both hands. You're serious? You can say the fine line, NCOs. There's nothing there's no one here who will be taken in by your drivel. Drivel. Hence why I say, Arctaz, don't rush. Impetuousness will be your weakness. Guardian axe of Kiaragonder, most pious soldier of Kerg. I can accept these conditions you two have devised. But it will not be handed to the Parlaroches nor the Brown Tails. Then to whom do you give it? What? Kiaragonder? Completely correct, Arctaz. Most faithfully to, of the people of Kiaragonder. Every inch of territory of the Silver Ashes and of all of you all too is fundamentally accorded to us by Kiaragonder's trust. We merely supervise it in Kiaragonder's place. Hold on. You can't be. It is as you imagine, Rotatos. I've decided I will hear your demands and give the Silver Ashes Valleys and Mines in whole to the Vine Bear Court for the Saintess to handle its factories and pits. What? So as to avert conflict between the three clans, Karag ought to have a leader who can hold the faith of both the, of both the three clans and the Snow Realm citizens as once, at once. Though we've managed, I believe that having the Vicar of Karagander take control of Karag once again, as in times past, is a fair and reasonable thing. I imagine that peacefully settling this issue, peacefully, what? Partitioning the Silver Ashes assets and peacefully avoiding a direct clash of the three families is what we hope for by all rights. Rotados, Arctaz, I can give up my valiant minds on this one condition. What do you think? I mean, it's smart. A spell of silence. The attending nobles look amongst each other, trying to comprehend what purpose lies within the words. The only sound, the scratching of the transcriber's pen, but the, that freezes too after a few short seconds later, hung in the atmosphere. 
The first to break the silence is a pencil as it carelessly drops, clatters to the ground alongside a stunned gasp from an unknown someone. Immediately, consciously, low murmurs of discussion arise one after another, as if a pan of rusty in lowly heated oil. What the fuck is that? That's cool. He's such an ass. It's Gnosis. Look! It's that man from Edel from the Edelweises. That Gnosis Kerr has the nerve to show his face here. I spit on him. Oh. Good word. He's turned this way. Huh. See the look in his eyes? Heaven knows why Mr. Encio ever gave him such great responsibility when his parents clearly plotted. T -t 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 Shush it! Now, you'll anger Karagondor if you speak of these things atop of Carolyn. Though you have to admit, his happy days are at an end. Mr. Encioz obviously couldn't tolerate his conduct one second longer. Really? Did Mr. Encioz finally pull him from the post? Yes! Didn't you know? At the council last month, he removed him from his office on the spot. He's already out then? That's wonderful. His number has all hung up. Oh! It's her! Monch! Cernosis, I've warned that we should not converse on these occasions. Yes, my apologies. Only I received a urgent message. The train carrying Rhodes Island's delegation is almost at Carlin's foot already. You had some interest in this company. Do you want to go and meet them? The Snow Realm has reached a major juncture. If they're out, if they're external forces that have been drawn in, then I'll naturally meet them when the time comes. No need to go out of my way. Besides, I'm merely an employee on probation right now. What position do I have to pretext to meet them? As pretext to meet them, sir, it really was disappointing to see how NCOs acted, ejecting you as a figurehead just to appease the other two clans. Appease? NCOs' thoughts are by no means as simple as that. I've heard Rhodes Island really did this succeed in slowing the ex exacerbation of NCOs' oropathy and. Oh, shit! Yes. Hmm. Then they do, in fact, have the resources to win the Silver Ashes' favor. Cliffheart has Oropathy. That's crazy. Okay. It makes sense why uh, Enciodes likes the Doctor so much then. But the attention of Enciodes is both a blessing and a curse. No easy judgments yet. You mean, there is no extraneous meaning to what I said. Anyhow, presumably, those in the co company must have applauded and cheered the same way those two dil dilettantes? What the hell is he saying? Did just now, hearing I was gone. None of them understand your worth, Sir Gnosis. Using the word worth to describe a person implies that person can be weighed. Sir... By now, NCO should have proposed his idea for the Saintists to lead the tri -Clan Council. The meeting hall at this moment should be utter chaos. NCO's in the end, this is a step you took after all. You're the one who understands NCO's the most. Only you can stand in the way of his ambitions. So is he the villain in this one then? The wind's picked up. It's going to snow. Massive snowflake sticks against Gnosis' shoulder, only for the frigid wind to pitilessly immediately blow it off. Garrick's snowstorms are far from rare. The only, they only need the clouds to gather thick enough, waiting for just for a turning point. And once the equilibrium of the air that supported those clouds is smashed and loses its bracing power... We're back here. Does Encio seriously mean for the Saintists to become Carrick's queen? Impossible. This is Encio's we're talking about. But he seemed serious about these ideas he spouted just now. No matter how you put it, thinking how incredible it'd be for the Carrick to unite under the Saintists' leadership, Carragonder's lands really should return to Carragonder. The whispers among amongst the bystanders come together. Momentarily, the roar of the wind outside the window is covered by the voices. But I need to sip real quick. My throat was burning. Encios, do you have any idea of what you're saying? 
unclear as it could be, let us lay everything out in the open. I originally held that, so long as results were had, and that Silver Ash's sincerity was clear to you all, you would discard your prejudices, and hand in hand with me, lead Karag forward. If the three clans could act together, then regardless of any difference in earnings, a country's stance upon foreign trade versus a company's stance upon foreign trade are completely divorced concepts, and the results obtained will be a world apart. Maybe my pace was too fast and led you to believe instead I was planning to submissively hand Kyurg to outsiders. As if you weren't, NCO's Carlin is not your theater to act in. Kyurgander will punish you for every lie you've spewed. In that case, that Carlin still permits me to stand here is my greatest proof. Leave it at that. I know full well I can't change your thinking, but I don't plan it to alter Carlin Trade policy because of your short-sightedness either. Carlin Trade values Carrig's mines and factories, but they aren't the totality of the company. Letting them bring the company into stasis is far less worth it to me. If we let an eye for an eye go in any, of, any further, then in the long run, we'll have spent excessive energy in, on uniting our views, and it'll have given outside threats a chance to hijack. Like you, this is no way what I want. Therefore, I ultimately resolve to hand over all executive power to the Saintus. It will be for the Saintus to determine. I can accept this arrangement, and I believe all present can too. A heap of nonsense! Who would believe words like these from someone trampling on the faith of Kyargander? Trampling? I know that's how you see it. Many harbor prejudice towards the change Carlin trade has brought. But labor is the very foundation on which Kyarg was stood. Forget not that not that should they still have works at noon, the Brown Tails peoples pass on kneeling in prayer to Carlin. And if things are busy, they certainly do not take the monthly visit to Carlin to hear the teachings. <laughs> and Seo's pulling s some ham fisted straw man like this isn't one bit persuasive. What next? Are you going to say that everything you've done is to Carlin is by Karagander's counsel? Karagander, page one, line one. Her tears are the ice eternally unmelting. Her back the unbreaking mountain. Her breath the cold wind of winter. Her smile the warm light of spring. When she awakes, shall the mountains summon her and the sky cast down lustrous spectra. No one has ever said that the holy mount can truly stand for her. Mount Carlin's uniqueness is owed to the vine bear court being situated on it. If you denounce me for harm of the vine bear court's interests, I will readily concede that. Besides, I have brought my full good faith. In addition, in addition, those who toil will power will hold power, and those who idle will suffer. I have never gone against her teachings. Utter, utter tripe! The Vine Bear Court is Karagoner's representative upon this land, and the Saintess of the Vine Bear Court, her Terran speaker. How do you think you can change this with a mere few utterances? Great Elder, will the Vine Bear Court suffer these wild lies? Naturally, I have to protest what Enzio says. However, Day in and day out, the scholars wage countless disputes over the interpretations of her words. The Vine Bear Court is not a place to have of outlawed scent by any means. Who is right and who is wrong? Far be it for you and me, or me, to have the final say, Arctaz. Page 3, line 5. In the beginning, Karak had but one untamed settlement, so until she lifted her head from amidst the mountains... This time, following NCO's start, some nobles presently, present notably begin to recite alongside him. She became as human, and lived in survival with the untamed, yet they feared her might, and honored her as divine. More came to gather at her side, and so was Kerig born, and she, its first ruler. Under her guidance, did Kerig flourish and thrive in bountifulness. Arctaz, tell me, what does page 321, line 1 say? After she held the kingdom for three centuries, there came one sudden day when she passed the ruler's title to her helper and vanished amidst the blizzard. Henceforth, Kerg 
was given unto the people's hands. Everyone, we are all of Kerrig and her all her people. It is exactly as I said before. If there's someone able to determine how we should proceed, then it is not I, nor you, nor Rotatos. This someone must be her speaker, the Saintus. That we do not trust each other won't matter. That we don't. <sighs> that we do not trust each other won't matter. The Saintus will determine for us and show us towards the future. Or do you mean to admit somehow? That you don't trust the Saintist to make the fairest ruling. Where the fuck did that thing just go? I just like launched it. Well, now I'm sad. This is gone. Fuck. Okay. Where the fuck did it go? It, it, I launched it, it bounced off my leg, and then it disappeared. That's wonderful. Are you mean to admit that somehow that you don't trust the Saintist to make the barest ruling? That you don't trust her speaker upon the land? In an instant, the attention of every noble there focuses onto Arctaz. You! NCOs, how dare you! NCOs, if you're hoping this level of provocation will rouse any reaction in us, then that's far too disappointing of you. The Saintist was born of Silver Ash, that we all know. But her character is equivalently common knowledge. She is still Kerrig Saintus. From the moment she received the glory and duty of Kerrigander, the people of Kerrig have been witness to her every word and action. Her conduct, her conduct has been impartial. Ever since she took up the title, as things stand, how can we be skeptical of her simply but for her common birth? It's like you just said, Kerrigander was broad of heart and resolved to give Kerrig's future to her people. But you, you Enciodes, Chosing only now, after all this time, to bring up Karagander, expounding on her virtue and benevolence, is that not out of some ulterior motive, really? You are the one who disrespecting the Saintus Enciodes, coming in with the sophist sophistry to coerce and take advantage of her people. That's a grave accusation, Rotatos. Far graver than your criticism of Carlin Trade. It seems our continuing this discussion further will only add to the maelstrom of conjecture. Given so, we may as well ask the Saintus to come here, and we'll set things straight in front of her. <laughs> no objections. With all three clans gathered, I expect that won't there won't be any room for your tricks. Well then, in the interest of fairness, may we trouble the Great Elder in our humble request of the Saintus. So be it. I'll go ask her. Exercise patient, please. Patience, please. Hey, Enya! I think it might be snowing today. What's so strange about that? The snow never stops falling on this mountain. Something's different. So, Enciotes proposes the three families hand their power to me for me to decide Carrick's future? Indeed. What do you think of it, Enya? I... Well met, El Great Elder. Enya, here you are. I imagine you've probably heard about the Assembly's affairs. If you mean the transfer of power, yes. I already know. There's been progress, then, if you've come for me now. Keen, as, keen ever since you were a little, young one. It's reached a point where the clan's views clash like fire and water. Before this council convened... Silver Ash gave me a hint or two that, under the current situation, the plan he'd suggest may well de-escalate. It seems you don't approve of my actions, Last Council, after all, Great Elder. Enya, oh Enya. Come, child. Look outside. Could you know the years it took for the frost and snow to finally cover these mountains? And could you know how many years had to pass for us to have this pure and holy summit where we stand? I understand. But... Her tears are the ice eternally unmelting, her back the unbreaking mountain, her breath the cold wind of winter, her smile the warm light of spring. If everything was Karagander's gift, then why must Karagander's people still fear the blizzard? In that respect, you and him do seem alike, yet different too. Um, pardon me? Nothing. Just an old man thinking out loud. What you say is correct, Saintus. You spent all your time atop this summit. 
and the mountains have bowed to Karagondor Speaker in turn. To think so quite think so is quite right. However, in snow of this great built up over many so many years, how many of Karagondor's people would be buried? Should it ever collapse? To me, Kiarig's peace of mind has always come first and foremost. I trust, Saintus, that you are the same. Huh. It's about time. The three are still in the hall awaiting you. You cannot appear too soon, but I, won't, I wouldn't advise you be too late either. Now is the perfect time. May you both come this way, please. All right. There's going to be 20 voices again. Kiarig's peace of mind. Letting the snow carry on building underfoot without a place for us to clear away? Will that be peace for Kierg? Kierg, under I pray, watch over your people. Saintus arrives. In the wake of the blizzard sweeping the mountain, the clear, sharp bell strokes come as if from the heavens to the ears of Kierigander's people. Where she passes, no noble fails to stand, offering the most formal etiquette, chanting the most devout prayer. Frost and snow have fallen by your will to bring to Kierig blessing, blessings. <laughs> blessings. Saintus, it's been long. With your litany of occupations, you've neglected worship, Sharanciodes. It truly has been long. You requested an audi investigation of the valleys and mines prior, Saintus. I could not, of course, neglect that. Once all of this is settled and done, I will personally lead a procession of worship to Carlin. Your faith in Karagander is apparent th throughout. Why be so elaborate in proving it? That's a fine jest, great Saintus. I hear a sister of yours has come back to Kiarig. You're well informed, Saintus. She should be on the path to Carland with an honored guest at this very moment. A guest? Indeed. Up till now, my sister has been receiving treatment at a medical firm called Rhodes Island for her oropathy. For the coming grand ceremony, I've invited one of those said firm's leaders to visit Kiarig as a gesture of thanks. You care so much for your sister, Sir Enciodes. Truly, it is admirable. You flatter me, Saintus. I presume you already know of my proposal. What do you think of it? What are Sir Arctas and Lady Rotatos' considerations? I, Arctas, with my faith in Kiaragon are visible to all, say that let alone merely having the Saintus be in the mediator of the three clans. Hold it, Arctas. I could hand my position as head to her, and what shame should it be? And you, Lady Rotatos? Who could possibly say no at this moment? Who would dare say no in this moment? For the great Saintus to be the arbitrator of the three clans in this present situation is indeed the best option. I understand. As the three clans' heads all submit to this and are willing to entrust themselves to me, I shall respond in kind to all and assume the duty of guiding Kierig Looking after everyone's health is my nice. greatest motivation. That was fun. I like that. Let's see the rewards. I got Kiara at level or 12 stars. We'll take it 12. What is this? Can be set as an icon serving as a personal branding. With thousands of years of snow reverberating, silence will never befall Carlin again. Black Twin Peaks. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna love this. I already know it. I love Karagander. Like, uh. Karag. That's it. Not Karagander. I love the Karagander, uh, area. It's so much fun. I like, uh. And when it comes to history, I like history in real life, too. And, like, the Nordic history and a bunch of stuff like that. I always thought it was really fun and fascinating to learn about. So, like,. This reminds me of that a little bit, and uh, it's a lot of fun because of that. Um, that's it for me, though, for this. Oh, the Grand Ceremony and the Holy Hunt. Okay. That's it for me this video, though. That was a lot of fun. Um, 
Enceodes is an ass. I could have guessed that was going to happen, though. Um, the Saintist saying yes. Obviously, we already knew it was going to happen because I just played the other event. Um, Arctaz being hard-headed fits. And I'm excited to learn more about Arctaz's character because, like... I liked Arctaz and Leto's uh, story in the second event, uh, the Rides to Lake Silberna hers. I loved their like interactions and their like development between each other. So I'm excited to learn more about him. And for Rotados, she seems smart and like fun. So I'm excited to also see how she turns out in this event. And uh, yeah, that's it. It was crazy. There's going to be a lot of voices and I'm going to forget them and they're going to be changed around every single time I see a new character. So don't expect the same voice ever. Um, if you like this video though, like and subscribe. I'd love to have you around. Um, the I'm going to keep going on this. Probably just going to go straight into this in the next episode. Other than that though, the Discord is in the description. I don't know why I do this every time I do this. The Discord is in the description and so is the Ko-Fi. If you want to support the Ko-Fi, go on ahead. It's not... <laughs> It's up to you. Uh, although, if you follow, you do get to see the thumbnails early. And other than that, though, you better have a good night. And bye-bye!